Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I am going to explain a Tamil language science fiction action film called 2.0. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. Eight years ago, a highly advanced AI robot named Chitty wreaked havoc in Chennai, India. Its creator, Dr. Vasigaran, helped dismantle it and send it to a museum. At present time, he is working on a similar project, but with precautions to avoid making the mistakes that he made with Chitty. Until now, he has been able to create an android named Neela. Unlike Chitty, she is not equipped with military weapons and has manageable human emotions. She is a perfect household and work assistant. One day, a group of college students arrives at Dr. Vasigaran's lab to study his humanoid robots. When asked about the robot Chitty, the doctor claims that he might be revived if his services are needed in the future. But for now, he is better off at the museum. After the session, a student is on his cell phone when suddenly, a strange force pulls it out of his hands. Stunned, the guy reaches for it in midair, but the phone refuses to move. A video of a bird plays on it before it flies away and disappears into the sky. Following the incident, several similar cases occur throughout the city of Chennai. From street vendors to mobile shops, not a single cell phone is left in the city by the end of an hour. The police station is swarmed by commoners reporting their missing phones, but the cops are just as clueless as everyone else. Soon, a scientific council, led by Minister Kumar, gathers to discuss the phenomenon. Some believe that the cause of the phenomenon is either a terrorist attack, an alien invasion, or global warming. But Vasigaran debunks all the theories and explains that the phones have not crossed Chennai's border and have not reached the troposphere. This means they are somewhere near the outskirts of the city. A phone company owner confirms that all the phones are switched off at once, making it impossible for anyone to track them. It is almost as if they have gained consciousness and are behaving as a hive. In the following scene, a vehicle full of the latest batch of mobile phones crashes on its way to the dealer. Hundreds of phones from inside of it fly away like the rest of them. Then, we are introduced to a mobile phone store owner, Jayanth. He is driving home in his car, which is being followed by an enormous swarm of phones. At midnight, he is woken up by vibration. When he opens his eyes, he is shocked to see that his room is covered in phones, so much so that he cannot find the door to run outside. The swarm displays birds on its screens before entering his body, causing him to explode and die. The following morning, police are confused by the nature of his death since there are no signs of struggle. While investigating, Neela and Vasigaran find electronic parts of mobile phones scattered around the room. Vasigaran sets up a tracker in a phone and switches it on to bait it towards the rest of the storm. The plan works and they locate the area where the phones went after disappearing. Vasigaran and Neela follow the track and reach a small village. As they look for the electromagnetic signal, they are led to a river over which a massive bird's talon has manifested. Hundreds of thousands of phones are in a swarm flying overhead, showcasing a phenomenon that is unheard of. The talon attacks a signal tower and breaks it. Neela saves Vasigaran from being killed under the tower before the swarm departs. At the second council meeting, Vasigaran recommends reactivating his first robot, Chitty, to battle the new threat. However, one of the council members, Bora, is strictly against the idea because of the destruction Chitty caused eight years ago. The minister vetoes the idea and decides to use military protection instead of reviving the robot. Bora is clearly not on good terms with Vasigaran and blames him for his father's death, who was killed by Chitty a long time ago. They get into a slight altercation after the meeting. Telecom company owner Lula is furious at the situation that is causing him a huge loss. After urging telecom minister Morthy to solve the problem quickly, he drives back home. But on his way, Lula is attacked by the swarm. He stops the car, only to see that the entire highway is covered in phones. The swarm chases him into the forest and eventually crushes him to death. Following that, it takes the shape of a giant bird and flies away. The next day, the telecom minister Morthy is paranoid since everyone associated with him is being killed, like the mobile shop and telecom company owners. 
Suddenly, his phone, which had disappeared like the rest, breaks into the house and starts vibrating. When they try to pick it up, it inserts itself into his body. He is immediately admitted into the hospital, where the minister visits him. The doctors, along with the minister, are shocked to see the ultrasound results that confirm that he has a cell phone inside his body. All of a sudden, the phone ruptures through his stomach and kills him. The minister finally understands the severity of the situation and calls Vasigaran to rebuild Chitty. The doctor immediately works to upgrade his old friend with new powers and abilities. The following day, the cell phone bird wreaks havoc on the city, destroying all the infrastructure that comes in its way while simultaneously dodging the military's defense. It picks a bunch of people up with its claws and drops them from a height. When the civilians are left with no hope, Chitty is revived, stronger than ever. He saves the people midair and works to chase the bird away. The swarm drowns him in the phones and creates a ball around him, but Chitty manages to escape the trap easily. After jumping off a few skyscrapers, roller skating down the highway, and hijacking an armored truck, he manages to attract the bird away from the crowd. When the bird eats the truck, he triggers an explosion and destroys it. From the ruins, the surviving phones reform into a smaller bird and proceed to attack Chitty again. This time, he is low on battery, so he crawls to the space station's generator and recharges. The bird retreats after being unable to enter through the satellite antenna. After everything calms down, Chitty shows Vasigaran the data he collected while fighting the bird. They deduce the bird is a collective mass of negatively charged electrons. Since a deceased being is negatively charged, they have all the reasons to believe that a strange phenomenon caused someone dead to gain enough power to control the cell phones. In simpler words, a negatively charged soul is the one behind all of this. After finding out the cause, Dr. Vasigaran invents a photon synthesizer that emits positive signals at the target. They hope it will contain the creature and neutralize its negative field. Vasigaran also analyzes the clip of the bird repeatedly and makes out a human face on the bird's body. He deduces that the face must belong to the deceased who is controlling the phones. Nyla digs through some records on unusual cell phone related deaths that occurred recently. They soon discover that a day before the phones started flying, a man committed the unthinkable at a cell tower. Dr. Vasigaran, Chitty, and Nyla drive the synthesizer to the village where the phones supposedly rest. They encounter the swarm and are immediately attacked. The synthesizer neutralizes it as it is supposed to, but the bird is stronger than they had predicted. Chitty guards the machine with his life, eventually leading to the majority of the aura being contained in the device. When the bird is almost destroyed, it manifests an egg that transforms into a humanoid figure who is also the soul they were looking for. Dr. Vasigaran recognizes him as the deceased ornithologist, Pakshi. When Chitty inquires what his motive is, Pakshi calms down and takes him to the ruins of a house. A flashback shows that the house once used to be his home and a sanctuary with hundreds of birds. Pakshi was actually stillborn, and the doctors had given up on him. But when he was lying on his deathbed, a sparrow flew to him and revived him. Even years after the miracle, he passionately studied birds and developed a connection with them. But recently, the population of birds in India has been declining. On researching the cause, Pakshi recognized that radiation from mobile devices is messing with birds' nervous systems and their ability to think, eventually driving many to insanity and irreversible sickness. He held many seminars and protests to make people aware of the problem, but no one shared even an ounce of his sympathy for the birds. He was even mocked and taunted for his apparently idiotic concern. The official who had the power to help him was the telecom company owner, Lula. However, when Pakshi went to him with the problem, he was kicked out for wasting his time. Still, he did not give up. He protested outside cell phone stores, but was dragged away by the owners. After all, he was a single man trying to fight with a powerful group of people for animal rights, something they couldn't care less about. Over time, all the birds in his sanctuary and in the wild suffered depression and died while struggling. A heartbroken Pakshi buried them all and cried for days, mourning the deaths of his birds like children. 
As the last resort, he arranged a meeting with the telecom minister, Morthy, and accused him of all the deaths. Morthy retaliated, stating that they follow the law to uphold their business, but Pakshi realized that the telecom companies have increased radiation standards illegally to accelerate their business. He sued the companies in court and was successful to some extent. That is, until the companies turned their radiation down before inspection and won the case. Pakshi had no hope left for the betterment of the lives of animals that he loved so dearly. Soon, the sadness turned into anger and the anger into the will to take revenge. He didn't just want to avenge the officials but also the irresponsible civilians who kill avian life for their own pleasure. Then, one day, he climbed the tower that killed his birds and committed the unthinkable. But the radiation emitted from the towers woke his spirit up. It also absorbed the souls of all the deceased birds in the city and created a massive ball of vengeful energy whose only mission was to kill. Back in the present, Chitty sympathizes with Pakshi and the pain he was put through. Still, Pakshi is adamant about killing everyone who uses phones because there is no other way to end their obsession. Unfortunately, Pakshi is probably right about this. Somewhere else, Visigaran uses the synthesizer to restrict the creature. However, it only makes him more aggressive. Chitty is gravely hurt while trying to fight him, but is repaired by Neela. After being revived, he attacks Pakshi and neutralizes the negatively charged ions, trapping his soul in the neutralization device. A convention is held to officially thank the trio for their bravery. The minister allows Dr. Visigaran to create an army of 500 chitties, which will be donated to the military to protect the nation. Visigaran is overjoyed because his decades-long wish to help the Indian military is finally being fulfilled. However, among the crowd is his rival, Bora, who is envious of his accomplishments. That night, he breaks into the lab and releases Pakshi's spirit from the stabilizer to get back at Visigaran. In no time, Pakshi regains control of the phones around the city and becomes just as powerful as before. He possesses Visigaran's body as a way to threaten Chitty from getting in his way. The villain then turns into his human form and starts killing everyone who comes in his way. Chitty tries to fight him but has to stop when his attacks hurt Visigaran. Pakshi gains full control over the situation and dismembers the robot. Nyla realizes that Chitty's emotional attachment to the doctor is refraining him from functioning properly. In a time of crisis, the only robot who can stop Pakshi is Chitty's evil alter ego, Chitty 2.0. He was the one who caused problems and killed all those people eight years ago. Although it is risky, Nyla decides to revive him. Meanwhile, Pakshi enters a stadium and imprisons 80,000 people inside of it. He takes away all of their phones and multiplies in power. Bora, who is also at the stadium, is his first target even though he is on his side. Before he can do more harm, Chitty 2.0 breaks into the stadium and summons his army, the one that the minister permitted to have created. Pakshi collects all the mobile phones again and transforms into a massive humanoid, while Chitty does the same using metal objects. They battle furiously, but Chitty is soon depowered. Pakshi is about to kill him when a microbot of Chitty's creation named Cuddy interrupts him. He, alongside hundreds of other Cuddies, mounts on top of real doves and threaten to hurt them if Pakshi doesn't back down. Even when dead, Pakshi's love for the birds has not lessened. Knowing that he cannot let any more birds be harmed, he backs down. Using the opportunity, the Cuddies self-destruct and destroy Pakshi's army of bird drones. At last, Chitty shoots Dr. Visigaran, causing Pakshi to leave his body. The Cuddy bots trap him in the signal streams, where Chitty neutralizes him with a positive charge and destroys him. A few weeks later, Visigaran is recovering in the hospital. He explains to a visiting minister that Pakshi's violence was unjustifiable, but his intentions were not evil. If they prioritize technology over nature, both will turn on humans, as Pakshi did. The minister orders an issue to protect the remains of the bird population in Chennai. In the ending scene, we see a budding relationship between Chitty and Nyla. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.